Following the defeat of Morgoth in the First Age, his lieutenant Sauron rose to power in Middle-earth, becoming the new Dark Lord of the Second and Third Ages. Determined to rule over the continent and subjugate all peoples within, he grew his strength, breeding armies of orcs and trolls in the lands of Mordor. Yet the Dark Lord knew that armies alone would not bring him victory, and so he used cunning, manipulation, and subterfuge to help weaken and undermine his enemies. Taking fair form, Sauron befriended the elves of Eregion, posing as Anatar, the Lord of Gifts. Helping them create a set of 19 magical rings, the Dark Lord personally had a hand in the creation of 16, while the other three were forged exclusively by Celebrimbor, the grandson of Feanor, the greatest smith who ever lived. But what the elves did not know was that Sauron had crafted another ring in secret, forging the One Ring of Power in the fires of Mount Doom. Believing that this was the key to helping him conquer Middle-earth, Sauron gave it immense power by imbuing it with part of his soul, thereby linking the Dark Lord's life force to the One Ring. Sauron intended to use his creation to gain mastery over those who wore the Lesser Rings, with three meant for the Elves, seven for the Dwarf Lords, and nine for mortal men. However, as soon as he put on the One Ring, the Elves felt his dark presence, and so immediately took theirs off, resisting his influence. Enraged by his failure, the Dark Lord sent his armies to destroy Eregion, and forcefully took possession of all the rings, save for the three created by Celebrimbor, which were given to powerful Elves for safekeeping. Continuing with his plan, Sauron gifted the Lesser Rings of Power to human kings and dwarf lords, hoping their minds were more susceptible to corruption than those of the Elves. Yet the dwarves proved too resilient and did not succumb to the Dark Lord, though the rings did contribute to their eventual downfall as it made them increasingly greedy and more reckless in their pursuit of wealth. While elves and dwarves resisted corruption, humans proved more easily swayed, with the Nine Ringbearers becoming the Nazgul, powerful ringwraiths loyal to the Dark Lord. Although his prized creation largely failed to accomplish its original purpose, so much of himself was put into the One Ring, it became the focal point of his power. While Sauron held the One Ring, it augmented his natural abilities, ensuring he was as powerful as possible and allowed him to survive any harm to his body or spirit, so long as the Ring survived. But at the same time, should he be parted from it, he would weaken significantly, and were it destroyed, the Dark One too would perish. Seeking more servants for his cause, Sauron made contact with the Easterlings of Rhun and the Haradrim of the South, enlisting them through lies, manipulation, and fear. He then used his armies as well as his twisted cunning to foment war and suffering throughout the Second Age, ultimately culminating in the Battle of Dagorlad during the War of the Last Alliance, when elves, humans, and dwarves joined together to face the armies of darkness and determine the fate of Middle-earth. After a vicious battle and seven years of siege, the Dark Lord's forces were defeated, leaving him no choice but to come out of hiding. Staring down his enemies, the Dark Lord refused to surrender, engaging Elendil, High King of Gondor and Arnor, as well as Gilgalad, High King of the Noldor Elves. Though the Dark Lord killed them both, Isildur, the son of Elendil, then picked up his father's broken sword, using it to cut the One Ring of Power from Sauron's hand, resulting in the destruction of his body and weakening of his spirit. Victorious, Isildur had this one chance to destroy the ring by dropping it into the fires of Mount Doom where it was created, but he refused, having become enraptured by its unnatural allure. Yet it did not remain in his possession for long, as Isildur was later ambushed and killed, leaving the ring to fall into the Anduin River, where it was lost for much of the Third Age. Defeated and weakened, Sauron's spirit wandered Middle-earth for a thousand years and slowly regained his strength, secretly establishing himself in Dal Guldur in southern Mirkwood, where he was known as the Necromancer. In the centuries that followed, the Nazgul re-emerged and started attacking the realms of men, while orcs and trolls were bred in Mordor and Angmar. While most of those in Middle-earth were unaware of the threat amassing in the shadows, the Valar of Valinor knew that Sauron still posed a significant risk, and sent the Astadi, five Maiar in the form of elderly wizards, to aid the free peoples where possible. However, to try and prevent these Maiar from becoming corrupted, they were forbidden from using their full strength or powers directly against the Dark Lord. Although they each played a role in shaping the events to come, Saruman the White and Gandalf the Grey took on much of the responsibility for countering the threat of Sauron directly. 
Yet where Gandalf was wise and kind-hearted, Saruman was jealous and prideful, eventually abandoning the Free Peoples and succumbing to his lust for power, believing he could become even mightier than Sauron were he to possess the One Ring. And so it would be Gandalf who primarily led the fight against the Dark Lord, spending his early years wandering around the western lands of Middle-earth, learning about the peoples who inhabit the area, while making friends and contacts, studying their history, and learning anything possible about their past dealings with Sauron. By the year 2063 of the Third Age, the Grey Wizard became suspicious of the growing darkness in Mirkwood and decided to investigate Dal Guldur, prompting Sauron to escape into the East, where he spent the next 400 years growing his power among the Easterlings of Middle-earth. This period, known as the Watchful Peace, ended in 2460, when the Dark Lord returned to Dal Guldur with renewed strength. In 2850, Gandalf revisited the location and at last confirmed the presence of Sauron, urging the White Council to confront him, but he was overruled by Saruman and no action was taken. As Sauron's strength continued to grow, he focused on accomplishing two major objectives to secure his stranglehold over Middle-earth. The first was to find the One Ring of Power, thereby ending his slow recovery and returning him to full strength. Second, he needed to destroy the Kingdom of Gondor and capture the city of Minas Tirith thereby eliminating the realm which posed the most significant threat to his eventual military campaign. Standing in opposition of the Dark Lord, Gandalf the Grey took on the role of general and master strategist for the peoples of the West, having spent centuries gaining an understanding of the political and military landscape of the region. Where Sauron had the loyalty of Mordor, Dol Guldur, the Orcs of the Misty Mountains, the Easterlings of Rhun, the Haradrim of Harad, the Corsairs of Umbar, and the Variags of Khand, the peoples of the West could primarily rely on support from the human kingdoms of Gondor and Rohan, the elves of the woodland realm Lothlorien and Rivendell, the dwarves of the Iron Hills and Erebor, and finally the humans of Dale who were allied with the dwarves. Unfortunately, in the year 2770, Smaug the Terrible, one of the last dragons known to exist, destroyed the city of Dale and attacked the Lonely Mountain, driving away the dwarves of Durin's folk. Not only did this eliminate a large portion of their northern defenses, the attack left a powerful dragon in their place, a weapon of mass devastation which once served the first Dark Lord Morgoth and might one day serve the second Dark Lord as well. Deciding that this potential ally of Sauron must be neutralized, Gandalf convinced the dwarven exile Thorin Oakenshield and his companions to attempt retaking the mountain and eliminating the dragon. With the help of a hobbit named Bilbo Baggins and a man named Bard the Bowman, they eventually succeeded in their mission and restored the Kingdom of Erebor as well as the Kingdom of Dale. In addition to restoring their northern defenses and slaying the dragon, several other important events took place during this time period, such as the White Council finally moving against Dol Guldur, forcing Sauron to retreat into Mordor, and the discovery of the One Ring of Power by the hobbit Bilbo Baggins. Many years after being lost in the Anduin River, the One Ring was found by a steward named Deagle, who was quickly killed by his friend Smeagol, who then took his precious prize into the mountains where he lived in solitude for many years. Although the One Ring granted him long life, it also drove him mad with obsession, turning him into the twisted creature known as Gollum, until it eventually abandoned him and slipped from his grasp. The ring was then found by Bilbo Baggins as he traveled through the Misty Mountains during his adventure with the company of Thor and Oakenshield. Though Gandalf knew that his small friend had acquired a ring during the journey and grew concerned early on, he did not truly begin to suspect the truth until many years later when he saw that Bilbo had stopped aging and grew irrationally angry when asked to part with his precious prize. After Bilbo moved away and gave the ring to his nephew Frodo, Gandalf at last was able to confirm his suspicion and immediately sent the Hobbit and three companions on a journey east so they might attend the Council of Elrond to be held in Rivendell. Unfortunately, the Dark Lord also learned of the ring's location, torturing the creature Gollum to learn it was in the possession of a hobbit from the Shire, sending the Nazgul for its retrieval. Despite a harrowing journey, the hobbits eventually arrived in Rivendell, and Frodo attended a meeting where he revealed the One Ring of Power to representatives from the Free Peoples of the West. Though many had differing views on what to do, in the end it was decided that Frodo must continue to carry the ring, as he had proven capable of resisting its corruption. Joined by eight companions to form the Fellowship of the Ring, Frodo was tasked with traveling to Mordor and destroying the One Ring in the fires of Mount Doom, thereby eliminating the threat of Sauron once and for all. 
Meanwhile, it fell to the Free Peoples to resist the armies of darkness for as long as possible, giving the Fellowship time to complete their quest. In this great journey, Frodo Baggins was joined by the hobbits Samwise Gamgee, Peregrin Took, and Meriadoc Brandybuck, as well as the wizard Gandalf the Grey, the human ranger Aragorn, who was also the heir of Isildur and rightful king of Gondor, Boromir, a valiant warrior and son of Denethor, the steward of Gondor, the Sindar elf Legolas, son of King Thranduil of the Woodland Realm, and the dwarf Gimli of Durin's folk, the son of Gloin, who had been one of Bilbo's companions during the quest to retake Ed. Despite their best efforts, the Fellowship eventually broke apart, as Gandalf died protecting them from the Balrog of Moria, and Frodo grew increasingly paranoid, believing his companions would not be able to resist the allure of the One Ring for much longer. After Boromir fell to temptation and tried to take it by force, Frodo and Sam left the others behind and continued the mission on their own. While Frodo underwent this perilous journey, Sauron started to march his armies west and at last began the War of the Ring. The conflict was divided into two large-scale campaigns, fought throughout the northern and southern theaters of war, with Sauron's primary goal being the capture of Minas Tirith, which he would accomplish by weakening the alliance between Rohan and Gondor before assaulting them from three sides. In the north, the Dark Lord's orc armies in Dol Guldur were ordered to attack the elves of Lothlorien and the Woodland Realm, while a massive Easterling army was sent to sweep through dwarven lands and join the fighting in Mirkwood. After the destruction of the Woodland Realm, the combined army of Easterlings and Orcs would join the attack on Lothlorien, then pass through the Misty Mountains to take Rivendell before marching south into Rohan. The defense of the north therefore came down to stopping the Easterling army from joining their allies in Mirkwood. It became apparent to Sauron that the dwarves of Durin's folk might be of concern to his plans, and so he attempted diplomacy, sending a messenger to seek an alliance with King Dain II Ironfoot of Erebor. But Dain dismissed the messenger without giving an answer and prepared his kingdom for war. When the massive Easterling army at last marched into their territory, the combined forces of Erebor and the Kingdom of Dale held them back for three days before retreating into the Lonely Mountain. Although the city of Dale was sacked and burned, the dwarves and their human allies continued to fight at the gates of Erebor, suffering significant losses, including the death of King Brand, which then led King Dain to rush to his side, where he died defending his friend's body. When they at last barricaded themselves inside the mountain, the siege of Erebor lasted for several more days, long enough for the great Easterling host to fail in its mission of reinforcing the orcs of Mirkwood. As a result, the Woodland Realm under King Thranduil repelled the armies sent against them in the battle under the trees, while Lothlorien under Celeborn and Galadriel also defeated the orcs and then pursued them to capture and destroy Dol Guldur. Though it cost thousands of lives, all across the northern theater the line was held and Sauron's forces were defeated. Yet what few knew was that part of the credit for this victory may have belonged to the Blue Wizards, Alatar and Palando, as some stories say they went into the east and spent centuries limiting the influence of Sauron where possible, thereby reducing the size of the army they were able to raise and march into the west. While all this occurred in the north, the southern theater faced a war on several fronts, with Sauron seeking to prevent Gondor from summoning their full strength or calling their allies in Rohan. To accomplish this, Sauron allied himself with Saruman of Isengard, allowing him to breed his own orc and Urukai armies. In addition, Saruman rallied the Wildmen of Dunland and used his new great army to raid and plunder Rohan, leading to the death of Prince Theodrid in the Battle of the Fords of Isen. Despite the loss of his son, King Theoden was unable to respond properly to the situation as his mind was bewitched by his advisor Grima Wormtongue, who was secretly a servant of Saruman. Fortunately, Gandalf the White soon arrived, accompanied by Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli, breaking the spell and freeing the king. Although Gandalf the Grey died defeating a Balrog in the Misty Mountains, his spirit was sent back to Middle-earth as Gandalf the White in order to continue his efforts to defeat Sauron. With his mind liberated, Theoden organized a strategic retreat to Helm's Deep, where they made their last stand in the Battle of the Hornburg. Though the fighting nearly ended in catastrophic defeat, Gandalf arrived late into the battle with a host of Rohirrim cavalry to reinforce the king and bring them victory. At the same time, the Ents and Huorns of Fangorn Forest decided to go to war with Saruman in retaliation for their careless destruction of trees and wildlife. 
Encouraged by the hobbits Merry and Pippin, the Ents attacked and defeated Isengard, while the Horns spread throughout the forests in order to cut off the enemies retreating from the Battle of the Hornburg. After their victory, Theoden received a messenger from Gondor bearing the Red Arrow, a symbol which represented a call for reinforcements, and so the king gathered his men and rode to their defense. In order to further diminish their defensive capabilities, Sauron sent the Corsairs of Umbar to raid southern Gondor, forcing local lords to keep their armies at home, sending only a fraction of their men north for the defense of Minas Tirith. With Gondor's allies weakened and their defenses reduced, Sauron sent his armies out of Mordor to capture Osgiliath before preparing a final assault. The war then culminated in the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, where Sauron's forces were sent directly against Minas Tirith, breaching their walls and entering the city. However, the defenders of Gondor were soon joined by the riders of Rohan, as well as an undead army under the command of Aragorn, men who once betrayed their word to the king of Gondor, and so were pledged to fulfill their oath before their spirits could pass into the afterlife. With these reinforcements, the Free Peoples were successfully able to defend Minas Tirith, but the war was not over as long as the One Ring of Power continued to exist, and so they decided to mount one last assault directly against Sauron in order to give Frodo and Sam the necessary time and opportunity to travel across Mordor and reach Mount Doom. Gathering whatever men they could, Aragorn and Gandalf led their warriors to the Battle of the Black Gate, the last major engagement of the war. Fortunately, their attack had the desired effect, giving the hobbits the chance to cross the barren realm of the Dark Lord. For a time, Frodo was captured and nearly killed, leading Samwise to take the ring in order to complete the quest on his own if necessary. But Sam soon managed to save Frodo, and possessed enough willpower to voluntarily return the ring. With both now marked as ring bearers, they at last reached the crack of Mount Doom, but by this point, Frodo had grown so attached to the One Ring, he refused to destroy it, choosing to keep it for himself, just as Isildur had done thousands of years earlier. However, the creature Gollum soon attacked Frodo, engaging in a struggle that caused him and the One Ring to accidentally fall into the fiery chasm. With the ring destroyed, Sauron was at last vanquished, with his spirit diminished to such an extent he could no longer interact with the world. After the news of the Dark Lord's defeat spread into the north, many of the Easterlings laying siege to Erebor lost their will to fight and deserted. Two days later, the combined armies of men and dwarves charged out of the Lonely Mountain and beat back the Easterling invaders, forcing them into retreat. With the war over, Thorin Stonehelm III became King of Erebor, while King Bran II rebuilt and ruled over the Kingdom of Dale. The Woodland Realm continued under King Thranduil, with most of its elves choosing to remain in Middle-earth. Lothlorien, however, was largely abandoned, with some following Celeborn to resettle in East Lorien, formerly known as Dol Guldur, while others followed Galadriel, who traveled west to the Undying Lands. In the south, Aragorn took up his seat in Minas Tirith and became King Elisar of the reunited kingdoms of Gondor and Arnor, ushering in an age of prosperity alongside his allies in Rohan, who were now led by King Eomer, the nephew of Theoden. Despite his defeat at Isengard, Saruman the White survived the War of the Ring, but was brought so low that he ended his days as a small-time crime boss in the Shire, where he was killed by his minion Grima Wormtongue on the front steps of Bag End. When he died, his spirit sought to travel west to Valinor, but it was blown away by a strong wind and forbidden from returning. As the Third Age ended and Fourth Age began, many elves traveled to the Grey Havens and boarded ships to sail west so they might join the rest of their kind in the undying lands of Amon. Yet some few non-elves were also allowed to make the journey, as Frodo and Bilbo were now considered honored ring bearers and so were allowed passage west alongside Gandalf. Samwise Gamgee, meanwhile, inherited Bag End, as well as the Red Book of Westmarch, where both Frodo and Bilbo had written about their adventures. Love Middle-earth? Then why not check out the limited edition Lord of the Rings Loot Crates, offering exclusive, officially licensed apparel, collectibles, housewares, and more. The perfect gift for fans of the books and films, this trilogy of crates will begin shipping in 2019 and will only be available for a short amount of time, so be sure to check out lootcrate.com slash CivilizationX and enter the promo code CivilizationX for 15% off your order.